The TV picks them up and then tries to turn them into a picture. Now, I'll admit it isn't very exciting until you realize that hidden within it is a clue to the formation of the universe. It was discovered completely by accident back in 1964 by a couple of scientists called Penzias and Wilson at Bell Labs in the US using a special sort of telescope called a horn receiver. Basically, a super sophisticated version of your TV satellite dish. Adam, you can tell me yeah. that we can't see a thing yeah. through these right now because they're designed to really block out the sun's light directly. Um, these are the only things that should be uh, used I mean, to look directly. I mean, they're not sunglasses, that's no, the point. They're, re all. they're really, really only strong. Only these things, if you want to look directly at the sun. There are other things you can do. You can make a pinhole camera and look at a projection, yeah. or you can use binoculars to project the eclipse onto a surface behind you and then do a selfie like that. Right, that okay. That's how I would uh, do that if you want to really go on Twitter. It tells us so much about why the universe is the way it is. And it's all down to symmetry. Because the laws of physics don't change from place to place, we get momentum. Because we have rotational symmetry, every direction I look, the laws of physics are the same, we get angular momentum. Another sort of rotational physics gives us the electric charge, and so on and so on. In physics, friction is a force that opposes motion whenever two things touch each other, which basically means friction acts all the time. The reason air resistance exists is because you're not a ghost. Or to put it another way, the air can't go straight through you. It has to be pushed out of the way. It's the quark gluon plasma, which you, you may have heard of um, if you were around in the first 10 millionths of seconds after the Big Bang, that you, you would have known that. Yeah, really? yeah, because that's what everything was. It was so hot, four trillion degrees C, that even the, the sort of the quarks that make up protons and neutrons, they weren't in protons and neutrons, they were sort of free to flow but they're not allowed to be sort of freely flowing on their own. So the gluons, the force particles, have to sort of stick around with them. So they, so they assembled into the nuclei of atoms as a result of the Getting immense temperature. Getting cold, yeah. Or the immense temperature disappearing.